Today is August 2nd, 2020. A couple of announcements before we worship. First, be here next week for our next service as we continue the selfless practice of being together spiritually and mentally, but not physically. It is our turn for the town crier, so I have submitted a devotional that will be out this month. And please check our private Facebook page for prayer request, and you can leave your own. Today's centering was written by Luther Julia and is inspired by Isaiah 55 verses 1 to 11. I ask if you will say, my home is in the Lord, after each statement. Homecoming. Home is a place of rest. My home is in the Lord. Home is a sense of peace. My home is in the Lord. Home is a generous welcome. My home is in the Lord. Home is refuge from fear. My home is in the Lord. Home is an open table. My home is in the Lord. Home is an end to eternal longing. My home is in the Lord. O God of all places and peoples, you're not bound by walls, contained by addresses, or limited by borders and barriers. Open our eyes to see ourselves at home in you, wherever we are and whatever our experiences. Teach us to recognize our neighbors and our fellow travelers and cohabitants are alive together in you through Jesus Christ. Our home is in you. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the prophet Isaiah. These uh, exact verses, but a little different. Listen for the words that are in this scripture reading. You'll hear them echoed again in our communion liturgy. We draw a lot of our language for our, our prayers and our, our rituals and rites from Scripture. And today we hear this very first call of God through the prophet to us to come and come to the bread, to the water, to the refreshment. So here, the prophet Isaiah chapter 55 verses 1 to 5. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, buy, come and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and for your labor, for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for God has glorified you. And our second reading, Jesus has just heard that his prophet, John the Baptist, is now murdered by Herod and Herod's family. And Herod had a feast and as a birthday gift beheaded the one Jesus was turning to for support. So we catch up to Jesus who's sorrowful and now is answering God's call without John to lean on. Matthew chapter 14 verses 13 to 21. Now when Jesus heard this about the death of John the Baptist, Jesus withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed Jesus on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, Jesus saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to Jesus and said, this is a deserted place and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. 
Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, and there was twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, and also women and children. These are the words about God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. O oh God, what generosity you have, what generosity you inspire us to. O oh God, help us give generously of all that you pour into us. Amen. Money is this weird concept at times. Consider, you can't eat it, you can't drink it. Having money itself Maybe gives momentary some happiness because it's shiny, but so too is tin foil and running water. And yet, for the love of money, all kinds of evil are done. And for the lack of money, all kinds of evil are done. Lives are saved or lost because of money considerations, rather than, say, if a person is good or moral or ready to die or able to be cured. It's made on how much does it cost and how much do they make. Money drives our country. We're racked right now here in Ohio with our Speaker of the House and his allies being outed for accepting a $60 million bribe in return for charging all of us billions a year in taxes to pay back that bribe. For love of money, evil was done. Money is driving our world. For the sake of better profit, corporations move jobs to places in uh, China and India where they can pay less wages to workers, not pay for environmental degradation, and not have to pay for worker protections. So for the love of money, evil was done. And money considerations are what are driving our COVID-19 responses. It costs money to shut down facilities and cuts into profits. It costs money to have fewer people on airplanes, fewer people in restaurants. It takes away from productivity if people have to stay home. And thereby, it costs money. If parents stay home to stay with their kids, say their kids are not in physical school, then how are parents to get money? For a lot of working families have to go back out to work to pay for basic survival. So a lot of people have to go back out, have to be out there because companies are not paying them to stay home. Countries are not paying them to stay home. Other countries have done this so that people could officially quarantine and not move and there could be a real cap on the virus and then let people out as they know the virus is not spreading around. Money is what is driving us in and out, staying put. It is a much larger consideration than deaths right now. For love of money, we have opened the Ohio Expert Expo Center to process all of the eviction court cases instead of letting people live in homes. For the love of money, our affluent, our demanding families have to choose between the safety of themselves and their children or being homeless, jobless, and then losing their kids because of being too poor to care for them properly. For the love of money, says scripture, much evil is done. So what even is this thing, money, that's controlling our lives? Physically, it's nothing. It's paper and plastic and cotton and digital data. It represents, however, souls, lives, time spent at a task, 
Time spent growing something, making something, doing something. Even if that doing was simply owning the tools of production, renting out land or equipment, or owning a building, owning a company, or if that something was being a child of someone who was affluent. Today, like in Jesus' time, wealth disparity is insanely huge. The numbers today, though, are much greater than they were 2,000 years ago. So for the first time in history, someone is set to be a trillionaire, to own one trillion dollars. It's hard to understand exactly how much that is. If you are a trillionaire, you can give, away, give to 999 people a billion dollars per piece, and you'll still be a billionaire. Those 999 people could each give 999 other people a million dollars and they'd still be a millionaire. In other words, someone is set to be a millionaire one million times over. Now the average income here in Ohio is about $56,000 for someone working full time. Let's imagine that as half a grain of rice. This is how much a family in Ohio has, one half grain of rice. The person who is a trillionaire is making 56 pounds of rice a year. One half grain, 56 pounds. That's the level of wealth disparity that is in our world right now. Now the person with a half grain of rice will be paying more percentage on taxes than the individual with 56 pounds of rice. Because the one with the most rice tends to be who sets the rules. So when the prophet today calls to all who thirst, all who have no money, the prophet is calling to all people and letting them know that God doesn't care about the rice and you who are fighting over a smaller and smaller and smaller sliver of this rice you who owe rice you don't even have income you owe more debt than what you bring in God's still calling all people deserve water all people deserve shelter all people deserve love no credit or bad credit or owing tons doesn't matter you are worthy. Even the birds of the air and the wild animals have food and water and shelter, and humans ought to, too. In this call, God specifically calls to the poor because the poor are the ones who need more protection, for they're more vulnerable. Consider our COVID-19 those who are more vulnerable to this disease are those who are more poor. Disproportionately, the poor are dying from this. Disproportionately, they are black and immigrant, inner city and now outer rural. Disproportionately, the affluent, the people with money, are native born, live in suburbs or in medium populated rural areas. And this is because the poor are the essential workers, the people who have to go out and cannot stay home, the people who are producing things, the people who own businesses or who uh, work in upper management can stay home and work. And so they tend to be more affluent and they're not getting as exposed as much. The lack of health care for the underemployed and the multiple part-time job workers means that these poor, working poor, have many more health conditions. And so COVID is that much more deadly. COVID-19 is letting us see the disparity in our country and in our world. It's letting us see the issues that are in our society that are making things so much worse. It's letting us see where we've let money be our God instead of the true God. Because the true God calls to people and says, I don't care you have no money. You deserve 
to be cared for. Come and eat your fill. If you thirst, and all people who are living are thirsty, come and be sustained. Feast on the very best food for free. Our generous God is not valuing any life on how productive it is or on how good their credit is. Our benevolent God doesn't even ask if you're worthy of assistance. God doesn't ask if you're here illegally. God just gives to all people, all nation, gives life. Now God is known to us through Jesus. And in our reading today, Jesus gives to the crowds out of compassion. He doesn't give to the crowds because they deserve it. Not because everyone who was there were good people. Not because they hadn't done anything to put them into their own mess. Not because they were fellow Israelites. Jesus doesn't separate them at all. He just says, sit down, eat. He refuses to send them away and he has compassion on them. We're asked to think the same way about money. It is power, it's a tool. And like any tool, it can be used for great good or great evil, because it's a powerful tool. Religion is a powerful tool. We can use it for great good and great evil. Herod uses his power, his tool, to help himself. To please himself and he has an exclusive banquet for the people who are used to exclusive banquets and he uses this power to kill the prophet of God now Jesus uses his power for others to comfort others strangers to him and he has an inclusive picnic for all the people who are used to being excluded Jesus uses his power to be a prophet of God, to show God's love on earth. Now we have power. We have different amounts and different kinds of power. I personally am usually shy on financial power, but I have networking power, mental power, spiritual power. And so to really answer God's call to come to the table, I have to be sure I am divesting this power, that I am using it for others giving it to others, sharing. And I think that's what we're called to do too. We're called to follow our rabbi, our Lord, our God, and come to the table and lay down what we've been gifted. These, these offerings of skills and money, of prayers and hope, of power and connections, these are given to us in plentitude so that we can give to others. And in the giving, everything is multiplied. You hear in our scripture that through the few loaves and fishes, there was so much they collected 12 baskets afterwards. I know we can keep assisting each other. And when we share, there is more than enough to go around. So much more. Right now, people are hurting in really different ways. Some people are hungry for health. Others want physical touch, human connection. People are lonely and need phone calls and letters. We're hungry for strong and inspiring and faithful leaders. We're hungry for peace. We're hungry for justice. And God says, come and eat your fill. But you can't have it in a private party. It's an open picnic for all people. And here there's rice for everyone, bread for everyone, enough that we are all filled and we are all filled because we're all sharing. And then God multiplies that generosity. So today we come to communion. We come to the table and I ask you to bring yourself, just who you are, with your sins and with your mercies, with your faults and your blessings, with your money and all your debt. Come with your talents and come with your lack of talents and your needs. Come because God invites us 
and says that when we're together, we are so much more than our parts. Come to this table and know that we are united across time, across space, across all places with each other. And we are celebrating, celebrating the world to come with this little foretaste of equality. Amen. We turn now to communion. Feel free to pause if you would like to go and get your materials. The Holy One asks, Why spend money on what does not satisfy? Why spend your wages and still be hungry? Listen to me and to what I say, and you will enjoy the best food of all. Listen now, my people, and come to me. Come to me and you will have life. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And we are gathered, St. Michael's, physically and temporally different, but gathered spiritually at the same time, at the same time in Jesus' name. Amen. The table of God is open to all who confess Jesus as Christ and seek to follow Christ's way. Come to the sacred table not because you must, but because you may. Come not because you are fulfilled, but because in your emptiness you stand in need of God's mercy and assurance. Come not to express an opinion, but to seek a presence and to pray for a spirit. Come to God's table then, sisters and brothers, as you are. Partake and share. It is spread for you and me that we might again know that God has come to us, shared our common lot, and invited us to join the people of God's new age. Let us come now to this holy meal. But before we partake, let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess before you and each other that we have been unfaithful to you. We lack love for our neighbors, we waste opportunities to do good, and we look the other way when you cry out to us in the suffering of our sisters and brothers in need. We are sincerely sorry for our sins, both those we commit deliberately and those that overtake us. We ask your forgiveness and pray for strength that we may follow in your way and love all your people with that perfect love which cast out all fear through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Hear these comforting words. If you repent and believe in God's mercy, your sins are forgiven. Trust in God's promises and begin anew your life with God and with all people in the name of Jesus Christ. Join me now in our communion prayer. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God Most High. Holy God, we praise and bless you for creation and for the gift of life and for your abiding love which brings us close to you, the source of all blessing. We thank you for revealing your will for us in the giving of the law and in the preaching of the prophets. We thank you especially that in the fullness of time you sent Jesus, born of Mary, to live in our midst, to share in our suffering, and to accept the pain of death at the hands of those whom Jesus loved. We rejoice that in a perfect victory over the grave, you raise Christ with power to become sovereign of your realm. We celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit to gather your church, by which your work may be done in the world, and through which we share the gift of eternal life. With the faithful in every place and time, we praise with joy your holy name. Holy, 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 God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory, O God most high. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God, Hosanna in the highest. We remember that on that night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took bread, gave God thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
God, consecrate, therefore, by your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and the vine, and bless us as, as we receive them at your table. We may offer you our faith and praise. We may be united with Christ and with one another, and we may continue faithful in all things. And the strength Christ gives us, we offer ourselves to you, eternal God, and give thanks that you've called us to serve you. Amen. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. And through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life Christ gives us. Come now, for all things are ready. This is the body of Christ, the bread of life. This is the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Our Savior Jesus Christ, keep and preserve you to everlasting life. Let us pray. Life-giving God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence and the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. Unite us with all who are fed by the life of Christ, that we may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love, and that your church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. I give you this benediction. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve God, and rejoice in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>